Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop. The sun is out, it's time to make something and this week we're going to be making a new whiteboard for the Garage Workshop. Roll the intro. Okay, so as you'll have seen uh, recently, I've been doing a little bit of tidying up in the workshop. I made the uh, wooden storage rack. Uh, here's the link uh, for that if you haven't seen it. And I've got this space on the wall where I took down um, uh, a whiteboard that I just basically stuck up on the wall, but I was never very happy with it. Um, and as you can see, I think you can see that I took a bit of the wall away. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little whiteboard uh, to go in this space. So I've got some um, white sort of plasticky board that I picked up from a skip outside the well-known coffee brand, which has just moved in up the road. I've, I've got quite a lot of stuff from them. So I've actually got the board and when I was sorting my wood out, I found, whoops, I found this, which is a strip of plain uh, milled uh, timber. It's 18 mil. I'll just move it out of the way. So it's 18 uh, mil by uh, 34 mil by 2.4 uh, meters. And I recently created a router table insert for my table saw. So this is going to give me an opportunity to use that. So all I'm going to do is uh, route out an edge to make it look nice. It's about the right thickness. And then I'm just going to cut a channel in it to attach the back solid backboard and the actual writing whiteboard. So let's get it on the router table and take out an insert. So the first thing I did was uh, replace the actual router bit that was in the insert. Um, this took a lot longer than I wanted actually and I've realised that there's a little bit of a design error in the fact that I'm going to have to take this all apart every time I want to uh, change it but <clears throat> that is the way it is I suppose but when it was out I just put in a grooving uh, bit which um, I've got in my collection and it's just to sort of give a sort of half champered half curve over uh, strip down the side of the wood which was a sort of effect I was looking for it's very it's a typical sort of picture frame effect but one that I was really keen to have because I just like the look of it. So when I'd got through uh, changing it, there's the router bit uh, you can see there. I'm not quite sure what the proper name is. I did make the conscious decision to not put the red disc uh, back on top of the router plate. It's got nothing to do with the fact I forgot to put it back on uh, before I tightened up <laughs> the router blade, honest. But I was really looking forward to this. It's the first time I've used the uh, the router table sort of in anger, as it were, the insert, having only just made it. So when I put the router blade in and I was happy that it was exactly um, the right width, the right depth, um, I put it back in and I connected it back on to the table saw. Very, very um, stress-free um, action, really, but I was just really conscious that I wanted to fit it in. The only issue, I did have a slight issue there with the uh, dust collection, so I just swiveled it round and put it in. As I said, there's a recent video which I linked earlier to making this router inset. The next thing I want to do is have a little bit more of an investigation about an automatic uh, turn on and turn off, um, NRV or whatever they're called, because um, it's a bit of a pain to sort of try and reach around and find the little on-off button, because on the Katsu router, the on-off button is absolutely minuscule so I'm going to have a little think about doing that. If you've got any suggestions in the comments then please do let me know but it's a sort of future thing but actually this does work a treat and from my earlier round table build I had this uh, fence left over so I just thought oh I'll see if that fits and actually it fits perfectly so the first thing I did was just grab a little test piece uh, of wood just to see how it would go and to make sure that I had the right um, the right depth and also the right angle for the fence if you see what I mean but having run it through it was really good I was very pleased with how it turned out need a little bit of shifting along to get it in exactly the right place but when I ran it through and bearing in mind this is a much harder wood than the, the softer sort of wood I was using so I ran it through and it gave me a really lovely groove and then I was ready to move on to my longer uh, piece after I remembered to attach the dust collection via my um, my Titan workshop vac. 
More about that Titan Workshop VAC in next week's video. It came to a very unfortunate end, but more about that in another video. So uh, as you can see, I ran it through a few times, uh, just to make sure I was happy with it. And then I went on to the bigger piece of wood. At this point, I had my first issue. I was expecting to get some issues, um, but this was my first issue. Just the way that the wood was being fed through, it was catching in the sort of dip uh, at the end and not giving a completely all the way through um, straight groove. So hence me running it few, uh, through a few times, as you can see. I just wanted to make sure it was absolutely tight. Okay, so uh, hopefully um, you can see that's turned out really nicely, to be honest. I'm surprised at how nice that looks. There's a couple of little bits there which um, have hitched off. And there's a couple of bits there that look don't look very uniform, uh, but they actually are. It's just like the, the colouring of the wood. Um, but all the way along, that is one smooth bit there. But there is one little bit here where it's not 100% uh, nice and neat. But all the way along pretty much it's in really really good condition it's really nice the edge and if i put it this way it looks really nice so next thing to do is just get some sandpaper on it and give it a proper old rub down so this was actually uh, more difficult than i at first thought i thought i'd a sort of freeform piece of sandpaper would be able to do it but actually it was really difficult to get into the grooves and then I remembered my um, custom made Aldi sanding block which was like 199 which is absolutely fantastic and it's got a sort of triangular shape on one side and a curve on the other and I got that on it and it really really uh, helped you'll see me grab it there now uh, it really helped it was actually a much much better way of sanding but to be honest there wasn't much that needed taking off it was just a couple of little tears and a couple of the sort of fibers in the pieces of wood that just needed to come off but when I'd finished it sanded up and gave me a really really smooth finish which I was really pleased about it actually came out really well this strip of wood when I had the groove in, the next thing to do was to cut to the correct size. So as you can see, I set up a, a stop block and this was where I made uh, my first sort of mistake really, although I still don't understand how. Um, I measured all of the angles, uh, all of the lengths of wood correctly. And as you can see, that very last one was about 10 mil short, which I just didn't get because it was exactly the right size. I also realized that my bench was slightly out, hence you can see me pulling it. So then I just went along and retook about two and a half, uh, three mil off the end of all of the other sticks. And eventually it gave me um, sticks that were all exactly the same size. The next thing to do was to um, set the depth of the table saw to just the right height so I could cut a sort of chunk out of the pieces of wood. And that was so the writing part of the whiteboard uh, that you can see on the table behind and the actual sort of backing wood would fit in flush. And this is where I made uh, yet another uh, mistake. I'm just doing a little test cut there with my off piece of scrap of wood. This is where I made another mistake. What I did was incorrectly uh, put it in the table saw and took the patterned edge out as opposed to the back edge, if you understand what I mean. So it, it kept the back of the frame the right length and took out the front, which um, was a little bit of an issue. But to be honest, by the time I'd finished and actually put it together, I think I, it was the, I'd done it the right way, whether that should have been the right way. Um, the actual end result was exactly what I was looking for. And when it laid, it was absolutely flush and it looked absolutely fine. So either I think I got that wrong in my head or it was just one of those things where it actually turned out to be okay. So as you can see, I got the groove. It's the right, uh, nearly the right depth. Um, I actually did knock it over a couple uh, of mil. And then I just ran it through and this is where I, I had my issue, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. But essentially it's to do with that, um, the, the cut, uh, the cutout I really need a sort of zero clearance one here because you can see there the wood keeps catching on the lip with the blade insert and that was very very annoying and not something I picked up at first it's only when I finished that I realized it was a problem and that I needed to fix it 
um, so as you saw, the process of uh, putting that through was to cut out um, a groove, which the um, the plastic that is going to be the whiteboard and the sort of backing board uh, can fit into. Now, I'm going to be honest, it hasn't worked out 100%. Uh, this one, there's barely anything uh, taken out in the middle, and it's because the end was catching on uh, the clearance plate there. So that one's missing a chunk in the middle and they're all missing that exact same uh, chunk in the middle, obviously where this is catching on that. So I'm not 100% sure uh, what is the best thing to do because obviously at both ends it's fine, but when I'm feeding it through, it's catching there and then obviously when I'm lifting it up, it's not catching properly. It's almost like I have to lift it up and then push it down. But due to the nature of the table saw, uh, that's not going to work. So I've got a little bit of a ridge on there, which I can get it through. But it's going to be uneven whichever way I do it. Um, also, I moved the table saw the wrong way. I should have moved it closer. So it took this thick edge off and I didn't do that. Um, I sort of moved it the other way, which wasn't ideal. So I've got two choices really. I can either uh, just lay this on the top or I can um, try and hollow that out. It's gonna be too difficult to hollow it out with a chisel. So I think the only choice really is to raise the table saw and just take out a wider bit of material um, so if there's a little bit more clearance if the table saw's a bit bigger, but the risk of course of doing that is you're going to make the whole thing more difficult. So if I raise it up high enough that I essentially sort of put it down, push it down and then put it across, I'm going to get it level. It's a bit risky doing it this way, but I think at this point I don't really have a lot of choice, so I'm going to give that a go now. I was very pleased to say uh, that did work. Apologies, I, I lost the footage um, somehow of that, but literally I just raised the blade up a few mil and then ran them all back over and it took the groove out. So I just repeated what you've seen, but obviously with a higher blade. I then got my uh, sanding stick, my sanding block on it and gave it a quick once over and it was fine. After I'd done that, the next stage was to mark off uh, the backing board. I had this lovely piece of MDF, painted MDF, uh, which was just the right size. So I was doing some very, very good hyper accurate measurements here. You know what they say, measure, measure once, cut twice, or whatever, cut once, measure twice, whatever that saying is. But I've really learned measuring in the last couple of days uh, for this and the project that's coming up after this about the importance of it. So I got it exactly right. I measured and checked that the piece of wood was square, which it was, and it was that section there that I wanted to um, get rid of cut out if you see what I mean. Uh, put together my uh, trusty uh, fence and I got cracking on the cuts with my uh, Parkside track saw which I'm not going to say about how fantastic it is but you'll know how I feel about it. What a quality saw that is for the price I paid for it. It's insane. So I took it off, uh, got it exactly the right size down one side then the other. Now this is the stuff that I uh, I'm using for the actual writing section. I don't know where, I haven't seen it in that well-known coffee shop, so I don't know what they used it for, but as you can see, it's brand new. These bits are all about five foot long and still got the blue uh, tape on them and they are completely and utterly unused. They were just literally chucked in the skip and I didn't steal them out of the skip. I did ask the workmen if I could take them and they were very happy for me to have them. So when I marked it out, um, I put it on and I cut it with my uh, very uh, trusty track saw. Now I didn't realise actually but this stuff's very difficult to cut. When I cut it previously it cracked and split and when I did this time there was a couple of sort of stretched block outs is the only way I can sort of describe it. So I got out the uh, Japanese pull saw and just broke through because obviously what you don't want to do uh, with this is snap it. So I ran the table saw back and forward a few times uh, through it and just got off all the little sort of cuts. I didn't go all the way through there, obviously, because I was spinning it around to cut the other end, which you see me doing now. But by the end, actually had a really good uh, corner T finish on the end. I was really surprised how well it turned out, but it was very good. 
So the next thing was to put the mitre in the edge of the frame. Uh, this took a little bit of thinking and a little bit of fiddling with my table saw to get the angles right. And obviously when you do this and you move your table saw around, it's really important that you check your angles to make sure. Uh, this is a fantastic um, mitre saw, this Evolution one. It's only a very basic entry level one, but it gives really good accurate cuts. So when I had mitered off uh, the ends of all four pieces, I just offered them up on the table just to sort of dry fit to make sure that they were um, correct and they absolutely were. It was perfect. I even measured the corner, inside corner of all the angles, all 90 degrees, uh, which was very pleasing for me because the last time I, I did this and mitered something, it was a bit of a mess and I sort of had to have a couple of goes. But this time I did it much, much better and I was much happier with how the corners had turned out. So as you can see here, uh, it's me starting the glue process. I actually did cut out quite a bit of footage here in an attempt to keep this quite short because I had glued it three or four times and it just fell apart um, down to me, I think. So one of the things I did was raise it up in the air um, to give it a better grip and also to allow me to get a clamp on it just to make sure um, I could stick it down properly and see me there just pondering the best thing to do. But it did take a couple of goes to get it to glue properly. But then um, when it did, it stuck perfectly. And also I've just started using a new glue, uh, the Gorilla Glue you can see there. And I'm not entirely sure how good it is, uh, to be honest. I, I've been using um, Evo Stick, uh, an old big old bottle of Evo Stick, and that's always been pretty good. But... This stuff did stick eventually. It just took a bit of persuading to get it out the bottle. So when I glued it all up, I just slipped a clamp on and obviously I glued three of the four sides to allow me to get the board and the writing part of the whiteboard in. And then I left them for about an hour, I think it was, and um, it had gone off really hard. Um, very pleased with that. And then when I'd done that, the next thing to do was to fit in uh, the backboard and the cut uh, whiteboard section, which was the next thing I did. This was pretty tricky, I'm, I'm not going to lie, um, because obviously I wanted it not to fall apart or pull apart so that the two sides fell off. Because although they're stuck with glue and they were stuck quite well, you know, they're, not, they're only going to take a certain amount of that before they fall apart. So I sort of slid it in. And then I manoeuvred it up and one of the sides fell off at this point. So I just reattached it. And this is where I, I reached for the staple gun, the nail gun. And I just put a couple of uh, 30 mil uh, tacks or, you know, nails, brad nails in it. But it was only on the two sides and the side that fell off. Um, the other side was absolutely perfect. So I got it all nice and straight, put it all together and just chucked a couple of uh, tacks in it. And it was finished and I was really, really pleased with how straight and how square it was. I went round and checked all the angles and it was 90 degrees everywhere. So very pleased. Okay, uh, so this is the finished product. Um, what do I think? I've got to be honest. Um, it has turned out exactly as I thought it would. Um, and I really like the... Um, the effect or the groove that using the uh, router gave me. I was a bit concerned when I was putting it together and I was having a lot of issues uh, gluing up, which you probably saw in the video, uh, although my uh, GoPro did cut out, so I'm not sure how much the gluing up I got. I did have quite a few issues with the gluing up, um, but to be honest, it's pretty straight um, now. It does need a little bit of just thinning out on the corners, so I'm going to get my uh, plane hand plane towards that or my sander and just sand out the edges a tiny little bit. But um, it is good. It looks exactly as I expected it um, to look and it's going to be incredibly functional. The only thing I'm not sure is whether I'm going to paint it or stain it. So what I'm going to do is put it on the wall, leave it up there for a few weeks, see if how I like it. Uh, and then I'll probably just paint it and then put some water resistant um, varnish on it. I might just varnish it straight off. I'm not quite sure yet. So... That's this week's project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much uh, for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please can I ask you to subscribe, like and comment. If you are a regular subscriber viewer, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like and comment in the box below. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I'll catch you next week on the Garage Workshop. Happy woodworking!